On today's podcast, we're diving into the brand new ELD VT Bullet from Hornady. We talk about the design, the application, the manufacturing, and we talk about what bullets are available in that first initial lineup. This is an exciting new product from Hornady. For more information on this and all other 2024 new products, check them out at Hornady.com. I'm Joyce Hornady. You might say accuracy is my business. I make bullets. You are listening to the Hornady Podcast. Thanks for joining us and enjoy the show. Hello, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Hornady Podcast. I'm your host, Seth Swerzik, and today I have Assistant Director of Engineering to my left, Joe Thielen, and then across the table, Senior Ballistician Jaden Quinlan and Project Engineer Miles Neville. Guys, thanks for coming around the table. Absolutely. Good to be here, Seth. Thank it, you. It's great to be here because of what time of year it is. This is an exciting time of year as an industry, but specifically for Hornady. So uh, right around this time, you have the NASGW show, and that's a big wholesaler show. And a lot of us in the industry sell products through distribution. So this wholesale show is the first show of the quote unquote year, and it's where we launch new products for 2024. And although it's still 2023, we've announced our new products, and it's an exciting time. And one of those products is the new VT Bullet. And I want to hear your guys' insight on the design, the why, and its application, uh, and how that new VT bullet fits into our lineup and really what it is for. So let's talk, before we get into the history of it, let's hit some wave tops on what is the VT bullet? What are some of the highlights of it? Well, I cannot, this is the first time I've been on this podcast, and I'm not trying to hijack your podcast, that you said something that I wasn't ready for. So that's like best time of the year. And I thought you were going to talk, it's hunting season. Well, because that's you. You're like, <laughs> yeah, I'm ready to go hunting, but we that's can talk, true. we can talk about well, the Well, let's divulge but... <laughs> for a moment. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, yeah, the, the hunting season is here. The weather is turned and nothing feels better than anything less than blazing hot. And man, I love the cool weather. Yeah. So I thought you were going to say hunting. No, anyway, I'm talking can... new products. I think we should start with, I mean, Jay, where, I don't know, start yeah, around the let's table. Let's hit some and... wave tops of. So if the listener doesn't get through the whole podcast here, what are some of the wave tops of what the VT bullet brings to the market? And really, what does that VT stand for? Well, the, the VT is kind of a, uh, a blending of technologies, you could think of it as. So when you look at long range applicable bullets, generally they're very uh, aerodynamic in their design. Those long slender ogives and long boat tails mm -hmm. uh, that, we're, that we're used to seeing. Um, but generally they're heavy, heavier for their weight. Um, that's because, you know, it helps you with wind and, and many other things, right? Retain velocity. Um, but there are certain applications, say lower wind environment, long range shooting, um, shooting off of barricades where recoil is a major factor. You sure. know, you have kind of an unsupported position. And then the varmint world is full of lighter weight bullets. And so the, the VT design is really a maximization in those different fields. So when you look at an ELD VT, it's going to look very similar to an ELD match in its shape. And that's exactly the reason why. You take the, the shape drag characteristics of the really long range bullets, but we reduce the weight in them in a way where recoil goes down, velocity comes up. So there's a whole bunch of different application windows yeah. there where it lies. But generally when you look at the lighter weight bullet offerings, a lot of them are legacy bullets. They they were applicable for older cartridges, and those older cartridges had a lot of d uh, dimensional limitations yeah. to them. Twist rate Twist limitations. Rate, for sure. And and also what we call head height, or how much bullet can be hanging out of the cartridge case and still fit in the magazine or chamber. But we have a lot of new cartridges now. You know, the last couple of decades, Hornady's introduced the ARC line, the Creedmoor line, the, the PRC line, a lot of these cartridges that are really unlimited in their dimensional and twist rate designs so that you can use unlimited, meaning you can use any bullet really made in that caliber right. within that envelope. But when you try to go put one of the legacy lighter weight bullets in it, say a, a, a varmint bullet, they don't fit very well. Like you do that with a six arc, you put a 87 grain VMAX in it. The magazine has a bunch of room in it. It's just, it doesn't yeah. fit. It's not maximized. Well, you can do it and yeah. you can do it successfully, but it's not, you haven't optimized the performance within the envelope that you're working within. Yeah. Awesome. The ELD VT bullets do exactly that. Awesome. Well, I, I really like the way you laid that out, that it's a blend of two different categories, if you will, the lighter weight varmint bullet 
really rapid expansion kind of category and then the really sexy long ogive match bullet world and i think one important point to call out before we dive into this too far is that we've, we're talking about lightweight and lower recoil and typically when you say those things in the classic mindset it would be light for caliber and a lot of these bullets aren't necessarily light for caliber they're light for shape oh 100 percent. you don't that's get a, this shape good point. with this weight historically and and that's a big one because the shape is helping with the drag that's maximizing its efficiency mm-hmm. and the the weight for that shape is what's getting us the increase in velocity and we'll talk more that, about that when we talk about which bullets we're launching immediately the 30 cal 174 grain specifically kind of really exemplifies that that it's not light for caliber it's light for shape yeah and that, that, that's, that a, is that's a, a good point that's a good way to frame it because if i tell you I want you to envision a, a 22 cal bullet, a 224 diameter bullet that's 62 grains. With what we have had up to this point, your mind is already going to start to shape that bullet yeah. just based on the weight. If For I the tell last you, hundred years, if I, I could, tell sure. you a, a six millimeter 80 grain bullet or a six five 100 grain bullet, your mind will naturally start to say, "Well, if it has a boat tail, it's probably a little bit shorter, and if it has an ogive, it's probably a little bit stumpier," because all the bullets that have existed up to this point in those weight classes have looked like that. Mm -hmm. But what we're telling, you know, the listener, when I tell you a 62 grain, 22 cal bullet, think of an 88. ELD match. Yeah. Yeah. That's the shape. Then just add the weight. Awesome. And that, that really gives us a bunch of benefits that we'll talk about. So before we get into the design and how, you know, Miles and and the rest of the engineering team have these manufactured, because it's, it's taken some nuance to bullet manufacturing to produce something like this let's go back a little bit let's rewind the clocks one why would we do why would we pursue this and what were some of the early iterations you know i can think of a couple that i was able to shoot years ago before this was a thing that were just awesome so how far do we have to rewind the clocks when we really started to play with this kind of hybrid technology well, so watch colorado is where i remember them yeah i uh Seth and you were shooting them before that so a lot of times, you know, those of us on the design or techno, the ballistic development group team or whatever, um, sometimes we just go do things without asking. And this was one of those times. Yeah, this uh, is a- <laughs> I, I went out to the bullet plant and uh, Discerny was running 140 ELD. Well, at that time it would have been AMAX because this would have been like 14 or 15, I think, that mm-hmm. went out there and did it. And I said, hey, when you're when you're cutting your lead, can you cut me some so that the finished bullet weight would be 120 grains? I think is what I made those. And uh, had to make me, I don't know, a couple hundred of them at the end of the run. Didn't tell anybody in the process, you know. Yeah. And then started shooting them and was really impressed with what they did. That was really our first attempt at, hey, let's take a bullet that has really good um, shape drag characteristics and reduce the weight in it and see what happens. Um, and I shot those in that match in Swatch. It was a PRS match back in 15 or 16 well, or something. No, I think... Because I was shooting a 147 that weighed 135 at the time, and those were at that EL- same match. Those were heat shields. Okay, so yeah, then then we would have made another set of them then after we 2015 those. when we launched the ELD match line. Yeah, yeah. So let's the, talk. We made a 120, 135, yeah. and then the one, and then tested them all. Yeah, I remember that, those. That I don't a, remember those, those were, that you were. Yeah, yeah. I think because you must have done something prior. Because I remember yeah. finding in the. In our rack of yep. experimental stuff, that yeah, there's 120s and 135s from yep. the same. Time. And that so, was all the second batch because the, the first batch, batch I had like a little box that just okay. Well, we though. made several big boxes, and uh, this is related, so I'll share this story. This was one of those matches where Jaden would go, oh, oh the close yeah. range targets. Uh, I'm gonna ru- I'm gonna run the 120 140 shape, oh, yeah, and right. on the long Lord ones, is- then I'll shoot. I'll shoot the full 147. So he was layering his mag with different bullets. And his profile and with his, his dope his card. Dope card. Yeah. Oh, I remember that. <laughs> it's like golfing. You know, you have different clubs. I had <laughs> different, different, <bullets. laughs> different loads of ammo based on the target. Hornady Outfitter Ammunition is now loaded with Hornady CX bullets. Its optimized monolithic design combined with a heat shield tip offers extended range performance, enhanced accuracy, high weight retention, and deep penetration. Outfitter ammunition features corrosion-resistant nickel-plated cases that are sealed watertight, designed to perform under the toughest conditions. No matter where adventure takes you, trust your hunt to Outfitter Ammunition from Hornady. 
One one wave top that I think we should hit before we roll into it is for our listeners. For me, as a hunter, this bullet allows me to, if whether it's rain historically, if range estimation and hunting, they didn't have the stuff that we have back in the day. Yeah. So they they conquered that hurdle of not knowing how far it was, and making their trajectory flat with speed. Right. Mm-hmm. Twenty two to fifty, two twenty swift. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can go name a whole bunch of those varmint or hunting cartridges that they. If it was 50 yards off, the bullet was going so fast inside of four or 500 yards, you could still hold hair, they called it, or whatever. Yeah. This bullet does exactly the same thing, plus gives you more energy on target, less wind drift, all those things. So that yeah. it gives the more user- More retained velocity. It gives the user even more forgiveness for the variables that are in the field by accomplishing the same thing that they were doing before with speed. Okay. Now yeah. we're doing it with bullet efficiency. That's Yeah. And that's a topic that- hits into like the PRS and the long range shooting community every so often too, is like you can get super heavy bullets with really, really high BC. Your wind drift is always better. It usually ends up working out better for you in the long run for the long range targets. But in that space from zero to 600, the wind drift difference isn't really huge, you know, based on BC and that the gain and velocity that you get having a flatter shooting trajectory can end up, end up being beneficial in that. Sure probably more practical range uh, between, yeah, like zero and 600. Mm, got it. So going back years ago, now we're going you know, 2015, 16, 17, 18 time frame where we're initially playing with that. And is it as simple as cutting lighter lead and then adjusting the core seat so it's just seated down there proper? There's some other stuff that you have to do. If okay. you just do that, it creates problems. Okay. So there's a little bit more to it than just lighter weight. Um, but let's transition now from that time frame of kind of playing around to when did it become like, Hey, seriously, this could be, this could, this could be an entire bullet line. I think, well, my, personally, my drive for it was with the six arc and, and thermal hunting at night where, where we're, it, we're trying it. to get varmint bullets into the six arc. And like, like you said, most of the time it worked okay, but sometimes you run into that issue where to see those stumpy, you know, traditional bullets where they need to be to, to run uh, you run with so much room in the front of the mag that, yeah, we, we did run into some reliability issues it was for feeding just, yeah, for feeding in a semi-automatic and at night that is even more frustrating. Oh, yeah. And we, you know, and then you look at it and you're like, well, why not, why not take up that space and have yeah. a varmint bullet? Why not make a purpose built bullet for this? Right. So that would have been around 2020 when we launched the arc and kind of an immediate, Hey, we, people want to right. varmint offering. Yeah. We've, we've got the heavy offerings. And there's definitely a need, like, especially with the six arc, there's, there's kind of a happy spot somewhere in there that's, you know, less than a hundred grains, um, Mm -hmm. where, yeah, functionally you can get really, really good ballistics. If you could, if you could just bump the speed up, bump the bullet weight down, but there's not a ton of purpose made bullets with long O jives in that, in that realm They're you know, they're all for 243 Mm -hmm. head height. Yeah. And that's a big one. Like Jaden mentioned is the traditional head height, the traditional twist rate and We've done a great job with the ARC line and the PRC line and the Creedmoor line of getting away from some of that, those, those problems that have plagued a lot of those cartridges over the years with modern bullets. So you get a lighter weight for length uh, because of the reduced lead and lead's obviously very dense. So what does that big air cavity do for us? Because there's a big gap from where that lead ends to where the polymer tip begins. What does that do for us? Does it do anything ballistically? Uh, with the center of gravity and that does it do anything from a terminal performance standpoint yeah there's definitely like like he was alluding to there's a limitation to how far back you can cut the lead and still successfully stabilize and have like repeatable accuracy yeah um so that took a little bit of playing around and we have a predictive tool that helps us a lot with that um and then uh, as far as terminally it's it's a varmint it's a it blows up on contact i mean you're yeah, it it does. What, it's a hand grenade. It does. It does what varmint it's bullets violent. need to do. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. violent. It turns itself into a foot, uh, maybe like a what volleyball sized wound channel. Yeah, I mean depending oh, on impact yeah. velocity, obviously. Yeah, yeah. 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 but it's, nasty. It, it, it's the same. Very limited penetration. You're talking six to nine inches total penetration, and then just a huge immediate. Yeah. So for varmint hunting, it is an absolute awesome bullet for big game hunting. Absolutely not recommended. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. For and sure. we'll That's talk more statement. about so the jacket as we get into the design of the bullet. But I do want to hear Jaden or Joe or Miles chip in a little bit more on moving the center of gravity rearward, and then how you can move that too far rearward, and now you've got problems, and how we 
balance right. that. Yeah. So. Uh, moving the center of gravity to the rear can help you um, with some of the more maybe aerodynamic or more advanced aerodynamic. Uh, I don't know what word you would use. Not like phenomena, but something along those lines. Occurrences. Yeah. Something, something that most shooters aren't going to be concerned with because a lot of them may not even know it exists and have no ability to manipulate it. Um, right. But yeah, there's there's some positive things you can do there. Back to that kind of old adage, the bullet goes to sleep mm -hmm. um, in simple terms. There's some things you can do with the center of gravity location that will help that happen faster. And it's a positive thing, you know, okay. when your bullet goes to sleep, if mm -hmm. you want to use those terms. Um, those dynamic stability is the reference there. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So there can be some help there, but you can definitely do it wrong. You can take it too far. Um, and then you and end cause up with other issues. Larger right. dispersion? Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, because you start separating center pressure versus center gravity. And it, that arm gets yeah. stronger. There's two things fighting, and at one point, center pressure versus center gravity, yeah. overturning moment, it starts mm -hmm. basically out, outweighing. One side wins goodness. and the other side loses. Yeah. And if yeah. you keep them in balance, they, they fight well. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, they a good fight well. They fight, it's a good match. Uh, so so if, for the listener out there, for a better discussion and a way more in depth discussion on simple bullet stability, Go check out episode number 85. Jaden walks through twist rate and gyroscopic stability. We don't talk about dynamic stability because that's quite a bit more nuanced. However, uh, the gyroscopic stability, and we talk about center of pressure and center mm -hmm. of gravity. Um, so go check out, check out episode number 85 for that. So we've got an idea. We've got a cartridge with the six arc that's like, hey, maybe we should really make a purpose-built varmint bullet for something like this for reliable feeding. And then... There's got to be some match application there too, I would think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially... Was that in, top of mind during the design or was it mainly just for varmints? I think it's important to think about the time frame of this too. So Six Arc gets launched to the public as a you know commercial offering like right before COVID. Mm -hmm. And then we all know what happened, right? Like the market went crazy. Um, we wanted to... We knew at that time that like a... The cartridge had varmint applicability for sure. Guys are going to go shoot prairie dogs and coyotes with this thing. That'd 100%. Be, that'd be awesome, right? Love it. But, and we, we knew that like the 87 VMAX or any of the, you know, legacy options weren't what we wanted. They weren't like, like you just described, you know. Um, but that, that time frame was so weird for the industry on new product stuff because we were in this position of, you know, orders were insane and we're trying to make as much as we can to support yeah. the products that we already have it's really difficult to introduce new stuff so i know through those you know this is 2023 so past couple of years guys have guys have definitely hit us up and said we need a varmint option for six arc you know we've been we've been beat up about that many times over the years and hopefully this answers that yeah that we had some question for them, like, hey, we, we know that we need one and we know that you want one, but we want to do it right. We don't just want to throw together some legacy stuff and give you something that's subpar. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's an important thing to concentrate it on. It is, yeah. Well, in doing something, what we would like to call the right way, just it's better for the consumer and it's better for us as a manufacturer. It's better for the rifle builders and other ammo manufacturers. It's just better. A, an example in the cartridge world is like the 260 Remington versus a 6.5 Creedmoor. Just let us massage this thing and get the dimensions correct and the tolerances correct and the twist rate and the geometry. Let us do it right. And then you'll have a much better and more efficient product when we're done. And that's the same thing that you guys have done with all of the bullet design, but specifically with this one. Yeah. You know, and we needed to figure out how to make these. That's right. a fair in volume. We knew we had to make, make them and make them right. right. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. easy to so. get a, a one-off batch of something and th oh yeah, we got it boys. And then you go to set it up again and it's like, why is nothing working? <laughs> um, <laughs> right. so, but, so to answer your question, yeah, I think, I think the, the 108 to 115 grain realm for a six millimeter, for example, is kind of the, the top end, you know, for bullet weights that are match applicable. And then I think what we have, especially with the initial release with the 80 grain is, is more towards the lighter end of what is match applicable Mm -hmm. Um, but the, the drag profile there is, is definitely still applicable, uh, especially, like I said, for those intermediate ranges, um, like if you're on the East coast and you've got 800, a thousand yards is the farthest you're ever going to shoot. There's, you'll have no problem running those bullets. Awesome. Well, and let's, it, and one, one more th thought I had, it, uh, it allows you to kind of play some cool little games too. So there's a lot of guys out there with uh, with a six five Creedmoor. Um, they entered into that, and then they see, you know, you look at the guys 
winning matches and going to all this stuff. And a lot of those guys are shooting six millimeter options yeah, because dashers, that production BRs, recoil. BRAs, yeah. yeah. Well, that guy that has that six five Creedmoor might not have the money to go build a whole nother system. He's kind of stuck using that, which is great. It has awesome performance, and in a lot of cases, heavy winds and stuff like that, it'll outdo a six, for example. Mm-hmm. But these bullets give that guy the option to now come pretty close to the 6 Creedmoor level of performance with his 6.5 Creedmoor because okay. Lower we kept the shape drag, but we dropped the weight and the recoil down. Perfect. So that, that allows a guy that, that doesn't have you know the extra income to just go buy every new system out there, he can kind of start to cross into what other cartridges do with these bullets. That's awesome. Yeah. The Hornady Security Fireproof Keypad Safe. With a heavy-duty 16-gauge steel body, extra-thick 8-gauge steel door, and four 1-inch diameter locking lugs, the Fireproof Safe achieves a fire rating of 30 minutes for up to 1,400 degrees Fahrenheit. Both the interior and adjustable shelf are covered in a protective carpet that offers flexible storage configurations while safeguarding valuables from damage. The Fireproof Keypad Safe from Hornady Security. Well, I want to talk uh, about the manufacturing of this bullet and what features it has is, you know, it's got ant bullet jackets, the ELD tip, it's got, or heat shield tip rather. Uh, what are the design features that went into the bullet uh, and how does it benefit from them? And, and then what did you guys have to do to get this thing to run like a skin cat as far as production volume goes? Uh, yeah, so the jackets, amp jackets, they're, they're basically almost identical to what you'll see in our ELDM. Uh, offerings the ELD match and the V maxes as well. Um, it's a very thin jacket, and that's again why we don't really recommend it for hunting because yeah, these things are going to blow apart mm-hmm. immediately when they hit something. Um, but the there was a lot of back and forth that we did with uh, overall length on the on those jackets, um, where to find that happy spot basically where where you're those two things we were talking about fighting each other, where to find that that the valley where those two you know you get in the optimized point there. Um, and then once we got that, it was a matter of getting core seat pressure um, where it needs to be to to reliably form that form the jacket final do the final form basically in the dies uh, and get those to perform consistently. Um, and then heat shield tip, obviously these are going to go as fast or faster than ELD match, so you got to have that. Got to have that. Awesome. And, we, and we're intending to shoot them long enough for it to matter to to keep sure. that tip. That's awesome. So. We've been talking about them, but let's go through what our initial offering is. And I, I'm excited to see this line grow. I think, like you mentioned, Jaden, there's some games you can play. I think there's some games that we can play within this product line with some supplementary weights in, in the years coming. But for the initial launch, what we what we come out of the gate with? So the 22, there's a 22 offering. Uh, it's a 62 grain. There's a 6 millimeter 80. There's a 65 100. And then a 30 cal 174. All right, we're going to keep that 30 cal for last. Let's walk through those first three here, though, because those ones, um, people are going to have questions about twist rate and these bullets specifically. So let's walk through them individually. And if you guys would, what are some similar bullets that already exist in our lineup that might share some of those similar design, you know, lengths and ogive lengths and boat tails? The uh, 22 cal, the 62 grainer is going to require twist more like a 75 or 80 grain okay ELD so like a one and eight or seven and a half yeah or seven. seven and a half or seven okay um, wow that's so that's such a diverged topic from from what traditionally you would think a 62 grain bullet would require yeah it's so divergent from the the norm yeah oh, so, I so suppose like the, you'd probably be fine with an eight honestly you, with, with that you could a shoot, lot of conditions yeah, for most yeah. conditions but like you the, would. the guy that's been a 22 250 shooter his whole life and he's like i can go up to a 60 grain bullet not this one yeah not this yeah. one yeah. You no can't. your one in nine probably isn't gonna yeah. do it okay for these yeah um and then yeah the again to, to remind people too the ogive is longer on these similar to like a 75 or 80 grain ldm so Unfortunately, 223 mag length for an AR is going to be out of the question. Um, but it'd be, a, yeah, for a bolt gun, you could definitely make it work. Like these will be screamers in a bolt gun 223. Yeah. Awesome. So the 62, now we're jumping up to the 80 grain and six millimeter. And this one, we talked about the six arc a bunch. This is the one that I've been waiting for with bated breath the <laughs> longest, uh, simply because I'm a big six arc shooter. I have many six arcs and it's quickly become my go to cartridge for. A lot of things. I mean, whether it's 
white-tailed deer, antelope, prairie dogs, coyotes, PRS, target shooting. I mean, it's such a versatile cartridge. And this bullet, obviously applicable for other six millimeters, but at six arc, it really shines. So let's walk through what that one looks like compared to some other bullets. Yeah, you're, you're going to be in that, for, as far as twist rate co- comparability, you're going to be in that hundred grain ballpark of what okay, it was. like yeah, a one and eight One and eight, one and seven and a half, something like that. Yeah, should, should do you just fine. Awesome. And the 80 grain really bridging the gap between what is a traditionally a varmint weight, but with that shape, it bucks the wind right. like crazy. This one's been a fun bullet to shoot. And, uh, and then with that increased speed, you know, everybody likes to talk about looking at paper, running a ballistic calculator and go, oh, I'm supersonic to 1500 and I've only got this much wind deflection at a thousand. Realistically, that's great. But inside of that half a mile mark for me is the lion's share of all sure. of my shooting 100%. competitively and otherwise the lion's share occurs inside of a half a mile and with that added speed it gets there right friggin now yeah and that's that's pretty uh, uh pretty telling with that specific bullet and then we jump up to six five and that one's a hundred grain so the hundred grain six five um it should work with a one and nine twist uh and it'll fit into a uh, six five grindle um so that, that'll be kind of a cool spot for the 6.5 Grindle because every a lot of things have traditionally tried to push that as heavy as you can and that really chugs like really slows down the Grindle. Uh, this will get you a, a, a much better drag profile with a little bit more velocity in the 6.5 Grindle. Um, so it should be pretty cool there. So yeah, 1 and 9 should get you covered and then obviously anything Creedmoor if you have a 1 and 8 you'll, you'll be plenty fine. Perfect. And I saved this one for last because I think as far as our initial launch goes the 174 grain VT bullet is probably the sleeper in the lineup. I think. I think you know people will see that hot rod 22, that six that's going to be so attractive in the arc, and obviously you know the 100 grainer and a 6.5. And this, I feel like the 6.5 bullet world is pretty well serviced at this point. Uh, but when I look at the 174, the shape of that thing. I mean, when you hold one in your hand, it's like okay, there's no way this bullet weighs 174 grains. And where I envision this thing being popular is the PRS tactical division. Yeah, absolutely. So let's walk through what that 174 looks like. Really sexy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, for a 30 caliber bullet. Um so this one you might run into magazine limitations uh with sure. like a 2.8 inch magazine or whatever for mm-hmm. for 308, but a lot of those guys running PRS are running the 2.95 uh, AICS mags uh and that should fit uh just fine mm-hmm. for those guys, but um yeah, it's yeah, it's hard to say a 174 grain varmint bullet for a 30 cal. Uh, that one's maybe more of a target bullet. Sure. But uh, yeah, it, and then like in a 300 PRC or something, I mean, that thing is screaming. It's uh, <laughs> That is a blast. <laughs> yeah. <That's> a, <laughs> that is so flat. much fun. Uh, yeah. yeah. Incredible win because the shape is very similar to something like the 208 grain ELD match bullet, which, I mean, before it was the ELD match, it was the AMAX and that 208. Joe, how many bench rest matches have you won with that bullet? Quite a few. It's a slippery. It's a really good design projectile. So mm-hmm. now you have all of that awesome shape drag, low wind deflection, velocity retention, and it's not, that, that's a good point that I brought up earlier. It's not light for caliber. It's light for shape. And right that up. shape is where you're getting the benefit, not all, but you're getting a lot of benefit in that shape for velocity ten, retention and wind deflection. So now you have, it fits in the tactical division window which is 168 to 178 i believe i forget i know the top end is 178 i believe yeah Yeah. um yeah and just a side note that is in the top five of most devastating ballistic gel impacts yeah it was not good the 300 prc loaded up with a 174 (laughs) vt a listener out there needs to load that in a 300 prc and shoot a coyote and report what happens yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) We may or may not have done it, but yeah. we'll leave that to the listener. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So we've got a really good, well-rounded lineup. We're trying to get some initial offerings out there in, you know, the, the pipe hitters that people are, are shooting and where we're developing a lot of our new cartridges. We've got the 22s, we've got the 6s, the 6.5s, and then the 30, where we've kind of really rounding out what we have to offer. Twist rate on the 174. Yeah. Uh, one in 10 should be 10. fine. Yeah. Just one so that so our listeners got yeah. that, I'm sure yep. they'll want yep. it. And uh, yeah, a lot of those, those tactical division guys in PRS are yeah, running one to 10 or 10 and a quarter. And I'm, like I said, I, when I was a 308 Winchester shooter, I used to shoot the 208 on occasion. 
And uh, there wasn't low data to support it. Luckily, Lowell down in our lab hooked me up with some data. 308 Winchester Reloader 17 and a 208 Amax loaded to three inches even. And it was coughed out of the muzzle. I mean, at like 2450. <laughs> but it was amazing in the wind. It was a few extra clicks on the scope. But for wind deflection out there with the 308, the old pumpkin chunker, as uh, Jaden <laughs> usually refers to it as, it was phenomenal. And so it's it's going to be cool to get some of that benefit now with a little bit more increased velocity. And again, you get a 26-inch barrel, big heavy contour in those tactical division rifles. Yeah. That's going to be a force to be reckoned with. Yep. Yeah. yep. Might even push me into running a, running in the tactical division sometime. I don't shoot many matches anymore, but I might have to go back to the 308 <laughs> just to shoot that bullet. Yeah. I'll make Jacob happy. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Find the latest shirts, hats, hoodies, and accessories that you see here on the podcast and much more at HornadyGear.com. Well, that's uh, the initial lineup. There's going to be factory ammo offerings out there, which we'll talk about in a completely separate podcast, but we do have a, a line of ammunition to support these bullets, and that's the V-Match line of ammunition. And the, the name, just like the VT bullet, it's the ELD VT. It's in the ELD family with that shape that everybody loves, plus the heat shield tip. And then the V match. It's a varmint match application type of ammo. And we've got factory offerings out there to support these bullets because they're, they're great for hand loaders. There's a lot of people out there that don't hand load. So again, we'll have a separate podcast where we kind of dissect each load offering in the V match line. And uh, like I said, there's some cool ones. Uh, there's some that like that six millimeter arc that we've been talking about all podcasts. That one is, it's a home run. And then there's several other options out there that are going to just round out the lineup for the consumer. And uh, whether you're shooting matches, you're shooting varmints, or you're just shooting stuff far away, targets, whatever it may be, this, this bullet design really gives you the lower recoil and the, the, the flat trajectory that everybody loves. And then as far as varmints go, nothing is more satisfying than shooting a coyote who's sitting down and barking at oh, five or six hundred yards. Better than that. Yeah, I'm. I'm really excited for them. Um, for my daughters too. So my daughters are when coming of age where they're starting say. to shoot, and you know they see dad shooting long range stuff all the time, and they want to do it. And and I have like anxiety about the idea of forcing them to you know using a bullet that has the reduced recoil that helps them not get flinchy or, or get scared of the, of the rifle, but has aerodynamics that leave so much on the table that she's going to get frustrated with, okay, I missed and she makes a correction and then shoots again and misses. Like the correction had 100%. no efficacy, right? She's not going to learn by doing that. Yeah. And nobody likes to miss. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> so the fact that the fact that I can keep the recoil low with these bullets, but the aerodynamics are so good that she that that learning cycle for her is going to be much yeah. more positive. I'm, she's going to hit what she's aiming at more often. Yeah. And then as they get older and start manipulating the 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 rifle themselves, you can have a slightly lighter rifle that they can handle and move yes. around in position and shoot these bullets mm -hmm. at at the you not give up anything lighter rifle they can handle it and the recoils oh, yeah. not anymore. Yeah. So, yeah. And it, it's it's a stark difference especially like I shoot a ton of 6 arc and and swapping from 108 109 110 grain bullets to these 80 grain bullets you like that first shot you're like did I is it broken? Did yeah. it like did the gun work? Like and yeah like <laughs> and I've double checked several times you know and yeah it's it's function and cycle but the 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 difference in felt recoil is like it's it's stark. Yeah. It's definitely noticeable. It's imperceptible from a five five six now. So like, really, yeah, six arc with a hundred plus grain bullet, which is what it's been offered with. It has a touch more recoil than a five five six. It'd be noticeable, True. right? If I blindfold you, hand you 100%. one rifle, you shoot it, hand you the other, you'd be like, yeah, that has a little bit more recoil. If I did that to you now with the eighty grain, you can't tell the difference between it and a seventy five and a five five six. Wow, they're identical. So not only is it good for training recoil sensitive shooters, new shooters. But for the PRS barricades, especially when you're in the southeast and they don't have, you know, more square ranges and they design some of these circus stages where you're standing on one foot leaning over something that they built or whatever, that recoil, keeping it down so that you can watch your trace, watch your impact, watch your miss in my case, that it just makes it that much easier. Mm -hmm. And then uh, follow-ups for me, it's been really important on follow-ups on running dogs. Yeah. Oh, you, kill yeah. The you kill the first, you got multiples coming in, you kill the first one and then the obviously other ones are getting out of dodge. 
and now I can see where I'm hitting. Oh, I'm behind him. I'm behind him. Come in front of him to roll him up. So yeah. that's been well. And that's f- helped a lot. And the, the flatness repo. of the trajectory of those is a huge advantage in varmint hunting because in that specific case, sure. you might know the range fairly decently on that first dog you're going to engage. Say yep. it's say it's a daytime hunt, right? And you're able to range that first dog, but then you see a second dog show up. You don't have time to go get the range ready on him, oh. but these bullets are so flat that your chances of engaging him just based on what you did with the first one are, are higher. And then yes. at night, obviously, range yeah, estimation is a complete they're, nightmare. They're so. phenomenal. They're just phenomenal at night. Joe, I you've been doing a ton of night hunting, as you guys all have. But Joe specifically, mainly with that 62 and the 22 mm-hmm. caliber, how long yeah. have you been shooting that? And what's the terminal performance like on, you know, one yeah. prairie dogs are one thing, but in the dead of winter and you got a big male furred up Sandhills coyote, are these things authoritative? What's it been like at night? It's so yeah. Everybody that shoots uh, thermals at night knows that you range estimation is a problem. I don't have a range finder on mine, and then the time to use it, and you're trying to keep track of stuff at night. You can't see it. It's tough. Um, and then the other thing at night is in the daytime, I can tell you like I'm going to hit him right in the shoulder or whatever. I can place the bullet pretty much where I want because you can see better. Well, at night with a thermal. He's all white or black or whatever, and it's it's a lot harder to get a precise aiming point, point that yeah. I'm going to kill that dog in the boiler room. So you just you lose more dogs at night, and then having the extra. So I come from shooting them with a two two three because I wanted fifty three grain want, V maxes, wanted, baby. But I wanted the recoil, the the rounds in a magazine, all those things, and a compact AR for suppressors. Anyway, it was a noticeable. So I've shot coyotes on the same night, same place, same everything with both guns. And the, the, the way it kills them or anchors them, I would say, is much better with a 62 grain bullet. It just gets there with more energy, more velocity, more knockdown, and just, it kills it. Yeah, that big air it dispatches cavity. Them, it dispatches them way better, especially when you get past 50 yards, doesn't matter. 250 yards, it matters a lot. Yeah, 500 lot. yards really matters. Well, yeah, if yeah. you're that far. But I'm just saying, you get out past... 2250 at night with your oh at night time for sure 223 versus a 62 eld you know 53 mm-hmm. it's a it's a night and day difference it really is awesome no, no pun intended i don't i so. haven't uh done any night hunting with the 62 yet uh, i'm anxiously waiting finishing up some rifle builds to do some thermal stuff with but i will say before the launch uh we had this out at an outdoor riders media event and it was the the 62 grain bullet and it was at the Cameo shooting facility there in Colorado, which is just a world-class shooting location. Well, they had us out there, and they had steel out to, I forget how far, but I want to say it was 740 yards comes to the, mind. Up the hill was, yeah, it yeah. was seven. But what they didn't tell you before you get there is that you can only shoot zero to 200 yards, and then at 200 yards, there's a mountain that goes up and away. So the 740-yard target was at a 28. 28- 28 degree uphill yeah, angle. Yeah, somewhere around 30 degrees. It was up there, super yeah. steep. Yeah, and it was so it was super <laughs> steep. And uh, we had, yeah, that little bullet, and we had the riders coming through shooting a bolt gun that I had built, and we had a gas gun there. And it was a non issue at nearly half a mile with however much wind, plus the wind gradient shooting uphill, plus that steep angle of just getting comfortable behind the gun. And people were banging that target at 740 whatever yards. Uh, and that just goes to prove how effective that bullet can be because you take a 60 grain bullet with a flat base and a stumpy o drive oh, and try to do the same been, thing yeah. you're down at four or five hundred yeah not yeah, yeah, gonna maybe. happen right yeah. yeah awesome well guys you did a great job with this bullet design from the early stages of Jaden just going out to hey, one of our press operators matt discerning out there and say hey hey run me run me a couple hundred of these mm-hmm. to fast forward a couple of years it got a little more official and uh i remember vividly shooting that hundred and I think it was 35 grain uh, out of the 147 shape. Yep. And that was uh, the first match that I ran with that combination. I was I came off the first stage cleaning it, ran it out to 1,200 yards, and I was like, oh, I should have missed something. I'm catching edge hits that I don't think I would have normally hit. I'm, like, I was hyper confident. It felt like I was shooting a laser beam. Couldn't miss. It was amazing. And then to see that technology get morphed now into what has become uh, the VT bullet, which is a great pairing of that light for length and ultra low drag shape. Uh, whether you're a match shooter, target shooter, varmint hunter, these things. We didn't mention the amp jacket. We mentioned the the heat shell tip, but we didn't mention that these are held to our accuracy standard that we hold our match bullets to. Mm-hmm. So this is not a traditional hunting bullet accuracy standard. We hold these things 
to that elite level of precision that we do our ELD match and our A tips. And that means something here. Absolutely. Yep. Awesome. Well, well done, guys. Is there anything else that I missed uh, that we didn't talk about in regard to the VT bullet new for 2024? Oh, I think we did a pretty good job. Yeah, I think some guys will look at these on paper as, as most of us do with something that's new, right? You mm-hmm. kind of see the information that's yeah, put out on Yeah, let's flush this it. out. We'll see, yeah. and, and I think probably some guys will look at it and say, okay, yeah, I kind of see the improvements they're talking about, but are those like big enough to make a difference? Uh, you Once you shoot these things, then you experience the difference. That that's where the light bulb really goes off. So mm-hmm. I just encourage people to give them a try. Yeah, whether you're a hand loader or you want to grab some of that V-Match factory ammo, you do need to shoot them because you can you can feel the difference. And on paper, you might question, yeah, is that a demonstrable difference? I mean, come on, what are we talking about here? Mm-hmm. And then you shoot it and you go, yep, yep, just decided just this minute, yep, that's a difference and you can experience it and you can feel it and you can see it. Yeah. Uh, that's a good point, Jaden. Yeah, especially, sure. yeah, like we've already mentioned it, but yeah, for those uh, AR cartridges, like the 6 ARC, it's a, uh, and especially for hunting, like varmint hunting, it's a game changer. It's a zero at 230 yards and point and shoot, mm-hmm. you know, basically uh, out to 350 50? something, 350. So, uh, it's it, awesome. it takes it's something that you would typically not expect with that cartridge, that yeah. size of a cartridge and, and makes it, yeah, like a legit heavy hitter for varmint performance. It does. And I would say having spent a bunch of time, all of us, you guys more than me shooting the 22 arc. This little bullet is the little bullet that could in that cartridge. Because when you shoot a little twenty two, you know, you kind of have that perception of what a little twenty two can do. But with this bullet design in that cartridge, night hunting is awesome. I mean, mm-hmm. it's just, it's fast like you were talking about, Joe. And oh. authoritative when it gets there. It really changes the game. And it's kind of a, you mentioned the six arc. We talked a lot about that. But it's kind of the perfect bullet for the whole arc and grendel family oh yeah yeah and uh, yeah same thing it's gonna bring it's gonna open up some applicability for the 6.5 grendel as well for sure yeah the grendel the six arc the 22 arc yep. uh, new for 2024 got to have this bullet in that initial launch and uh yeah the velocity's up the trajectory's flat the wind drift is great i'm excited about this bullet for our initial launch and i'm excited to see how this product line continues to round out here in the coming years because i don't think anybody in the industry is pushing innovation regarding bullet design like Hornady. And uh, you guys did a great job with this one. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Our pleasure. Guys, hopefully you enjoyed this podcast about the new VT bullet from Hornady. For more information about this bullet and all of the 2024 new products, check them out at Hornady.com. We'll catch you on the next one.